In the name 
of Jesus Christ. Let them be destroyed. Let them be destroyed in the powerful name of Jesus. In the great name of Jesus. We release the blood. We release the blood for open heavens. Let the heavens be open. Be open right now. Be open. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We release angelic ministration in our lives now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Matu Lahanda. Kaluba Rakasata. Rekatana Mega. Let God arise. Let every enemy be scattered. In the name of Jesus. Neva Tula Mika Tula Mreya Uta. Reka Siga Diga Tana. Nega Guria Nama Zota. Bayika Tuna Maga Tula. We demand the manifestations of the sons of God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In this era. Right now. Mati La Mreneku. Let the chains fall down. Let the bondage break. In the name of Jesus. Matula Ne. The resistance be destroyed by the power of the Almighty God. In the name of Jesus. Ranu Uta Gela Anto. Kruma Hande Enebuta. Sadili Mikuli Indakata. Brehenye Kula Bianta. Right now, we proclaim the sick healed. In the name of Jesus. Right now, we proclaim the bond loose. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. We proclaim the blessings of God. That makes us rich without sorrow. We release it upon our lives. We release it now. We release it now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We command the treasures of darkness to come to us. The hidden riches be released now. Right now. Right now. Into our bosom. In the powerful name of Jesus. Kaduri and Sika too. Let God arise on our behalf this morning. Let every enemy be scattered. Let every confused mind be healed. In the name of Jesus. Let every fear be arrested. In the name of Jesus. We receive boldness, we receive sound mind, we receive love in the name of Jesus. Masura Broseta. Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. Roto le maku. Rakatalabe. Ramakuta le branoto to. Rameka tila brehekete. The buriya kabila miri anta. The godi makatana me. The god of miracles. Arise on our behalf. Let there be a performance in the name of Jesus. Of the heart desires of your people. In the powerful name of Jesus. We give you the glory, O oh God. We give you the honor, O oh God. We give you the adoration, O oh God. We pray we praise your name. We praise your name. We praise your name. We praise your name. Ramashita la ba 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 ba. Hey, sagata gata gata gata. Runda gata. Ramashita la bro ye kato la bra. Ine gadu la bra anche gata. Hey. Jesus, Son of God, we bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. We pray right now for your anointing, your power, release upon us, even in our hopes, right now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, wherever we are participating in this service, let the anointing of the Holy Ghost fall now. Let the yokes be destroyed. Let the bondages break in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Run to Lake and let them manifestations of the blessings of God, of the blessings of God, of the favor of God come upon us now in the name of Jesus. We bless you, we praise you, we magnify you, we exalt you, we glorify you. Rabo Shitalababa, Ramasika Talambe, Robo Kotolo Brokono Kotolo Broyokoso, Leketele Baba 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 Baba, Ekalamashina Mama Maragata, Lekesika Talababa Baba Baba, Leketele Brede Kotolo Broyokosila Baba Baba, Lekete Baba 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 Shina Mariana Mama Sintanama, Leketele Breye Kesila Broyo Kosuta. We give you all the glory and all the honor and all the adoration. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you for what you've done and what you are doing. We bless you. We praise your name. Right now, lift up your voice and begin to worship the King of Glory, the mighty Jehovah, the God of signs and wonders, the great I am, the only God that can speak 
and hit his chest that there will not be any challenge lift up the name of Jesus wherever you are appreciate him bless him father you are a good God father you are a wonderful God from the rising of the sun to the going down the sea your name shall be praised 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 we bless you Jesus we praise you Jesus we lift you higher Jesus we glorify you Jesus we magnify you Jesus we glorify you father who among the gods is like you we thank you it is you who take pick up the poor the, the, the needy you pick us up you cleanse us up and you put us among princes father we want to thank you father we bless your name thank you Jesus that you are in control we praise your name hallelujah thank you father thank you
praise and bless the Lord. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We cannot understand. We cannot comprehend how much it cost you. How much you suffered. But Lord, it's worth it. It's worth all. We thank you for the price paid for us. Lord Jesus, we That a holy God will take our place, will take our shame. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we appreciate you. Father, we glorify you. Mahinde le mobuza kata deme. Renta la makusha kata la mboi ene zagata la ba. Rene kusa kata la ba. Jesus, we praise you. Jesus, we glorify you. Thank you for the price paid. For the Bible says, if you can do this for us, if you can die for us, what can't you do again? We thank you. We bless you. Rambo Shila Bekasa. Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the King of Kings. Glory to the soon coming King. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus. Rasha Tabashi Katalaba. Rambo Takali Andalaba. Reesi Kalabatanda. Lord, you've done more than enough. Lord, you've done more than we can take of. Father, we say thank you. Take all the glory, Jesus. Take all the honor, Jesus. Oh, God. 
child of the king praise the lord we give god the glory and praise for his goodness in our lives we pray for the blessings of god over each one of you in the name of jesus we are privileged this morning by the grace of god the man of god our daddy is in our midst and god has prepared him to bring us his word so please get your hearts ready receive the word and run with the word in the name of jesus and there shall be performance in your life and in my life amen, amen. so we want to welcome the man of god our daddy apostle george hooper as he ministers to us amen 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 we give god the glory god is awesome and he's majestic we thank god so much for his goodness unto all of us how far he has brought us we send greetings from all over from the united kingdom to italy and around the world as many that are worshiping with us this day we say uh, happy pentecost day today is the time that we remember pentecost so we give god the glory and we give god the praise for what he has done hallelujah Amen. so we want to um bow down our heads as we pray and then get ourselves ready for the word of god hallelujah so father in the name of jesus we thank you we bless your name we give you the glory praise and honor for seeing us through bringing us as far as this as we share your word together we ask for understanding and insight we pray that you bless us and then visit us wherever we are as many that are believing you for healing lord touch them and heal them as many that are uh designed for strength father give them the strength people who are, are, are expecting some breakthroughs and some promises father bring it to pass in their lives as your word comes we pray for divine visitation and with divine touch all around the world in the mighty name of jesus we thank you and we bless you holy spirit we ask that you will minister to us we give you glory and praise in jesus mighty name amen 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 so i want to once again wish everyone happy pentecost amen, amen. we are uh, so much privileged that we are remembering such a wonderful time like this and we can all record when jesus was crucified and then at that time all the disciples were also at a lockdown hallelujah they all went inside they were in the upper room when the lord commanded them to um, wait on the Lord. It was like a lockdown because many of them were afraid. They were afraid for, for the authorities who were looking for them to persecute them because that time Jesus was crucified and has risen and they were spreading all kinds of news about him that his disciples told him and all those stuff. But at that time of lockdown, it was a time of preparation so they studied the word of god and then they continued to pray in the upper room so the time that it was a day the pentecost day that celebration day that the holy ghost was poured out in an unmeasurable measure very powerful in such a way that people who were timid people who couldn't do anything people who were in hiding came out with power and the glory of god was so awesome hallelujah so we know that everything that takes place it doesn't matter how it goes god can turn everything out for his good and today as you are remembering such a time i pray that the spirit of god will be released and be outpoured over your life so mightily Amen. in a way that you'll be an instrument for this coming revival i know that god is about to do great things so he's using this moment to prepare all of us so that we'll be able to minister powerfully to the dying world hallelujah before the rapture comes it's a time of preparation and thank god that this morning i want to uh speak about uh something connected with sustaining power of love we know that it is love that brought the disciples together their love for the lord and their love for one another with that united heart the bible says that they were with one accord in the same place and it is love that brought them to that particular extent and through that the release of the holy ghost came on them and we saw how powerfully the glory of god manifested shadows were healing people and all kinds of things were happening and i know that god is going to do something about this so i want to read something from ephesians something that paul wrote and it was paul's prayer 
we know that um, he was one of the uh, apostles of those days who didn't walk with Jesus, but he had insight. God uh, manifested himself to him in a special way, had great understanding, especially because his ministry was to the Gentiles. So I want to read from Ephesians chapter 3, from 14 to 19. It says that, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints that what is the breadth and the length and the height and to know the love of Christ which surpasses uh, and, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So we see here um, the Ephesian church was one of the churches which was, uh, which we see that it was a mature church. It was a church that was growing. And so Paul's prayer uh, was for them to get a lot of insight. He prayed for them. Unlike the Corinthian church where there were a lot of mess and many, many things happening, which Paul had to correct them. But we saw that this particular church were people who were ready for more. So Paul was interceding for them that they would be able to uh, grasp the many things that God has imparted or revealed unto him. So we see one of the areas that he was praying, especially on the area of love for them, that they will understand the deep love of God, which, he has, which caused him to come down to die for us. So we can see that God created man to dwell in the atmosphere of love, which enhances and balances the emotional system of the man. Hallelujah. So when Paul was nurturing this, we was trying to give them understanding where they could come to a point where they could uh, align themselves, grow their love so that they can operate in that atmosphere in order to be able to have a healthy Christian life and have a healthy relationship. So when we look at the first element of prayer here, his prayer was the strength for the inner man because we know that this body is just a shell, but the, the spirit man inside is what matters. And so his prayer was that strength will be imparted to them. So he prayed for them and we also have our part to do to pray, wait upon the Lord, study the word of God, to be uh, uh, empowered and strengthened in our inner man. He also prayed that the, uh, Christ might dwell in their hearts by faith, that God's presence might be so strong in them. And also he prayed that they will be rooted in love. They will be rooted because love was like a soil. Love was like an earth. It was like a ground where they can stand like a foundation where they can build their faith. So he says that, that they will be rooted in that love. And when a person is rooted, he is fortified and strengthened. When we see a tree, a tree that is well rooted, it doesn't matter the storm that will shake it. It doesn't matter the rains and other things that will come because it's really rooted well. It will never fall. It will still stand. Even when the leaves are cut off because it is well rooted, it will still sprout out again. That is why he prayed that they will be rooted in love. So when a person is rooted in love, despite the challenges and the many, many things that a person goes through in life, what happens is that because he is rooted, everything goes on and becomes normal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we just bless God and we give him the praise. So he's prayed that they will be rooted in the love of God and also to understand how broad, how long, how high and how deep 
Christ's love is. So we see that the love of Christ cannot be measured or the love of God cannot be measured. It is so high, it is so broad, it is so deep that he prayed that they will have this understanding. Because love is so powerful that when we understand how love operates, we will not have impossibilities because love can do everything. That is why when Paul was ministering in uh, Corinthians chapter 13, he made that understand how love endures forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we will look at what love is. So the little definition is that it's an affection or liking uh, or the, um, an affection, deliberate presence or, or it's a greater display. It's a kind of emotional affection that we have for something. So that is what he was trying to um, we, we are trying to get from the normal definition of what love is. Most of the time, whenever we talk about love, people talk about girlfriends and uh, those kind of things. But Bible has made us understand that there are different kinds of love. That is where the King James never broke it down. So for us to really understand the, uh, the kind of love that God had for us, when we go to the root word that was used, we will really understand because King James used love in every place, but they had different kinds of meaning. So the, the, the little uh, difference of love that I want to talk about, I just put down three of them. We have others, but for our destiny, for our learning, I'll just take these three, which we all need in our day-to-day -day life. And the type of Greek uh, love that we have, we have the eros. That is the physical sexual love that a man will have for a woman or a wife or something like that. That is what we call the eros in, in, in that Greek sense. So it is one of the love that is expressed, but that is not what we are talking about. Another love that it, it talks about is the phil, uh, philos. The, it says that the esteem and affection found in casual friendship. So one can have a friend and there's a kind of love that put them together, that caused them to relate well one with another. That is that feeling. So that is uh, that kind of love that is also there, uh, which comes through um, fellowship with other people. And the, the third one that I want to really speak on is the agape that all of us know. Everybody talk about agape love, agape love, agape love, hallelujah. So it says love that is based on deliberate choice of the one loving rather than the witness of one who is love. It goes beyond natural human inclination. This is a giving, selfless, expect nothing in return love. That is what I can say because that is the love that God is operating on. Because when we look at our state of sinfulness and our disobedience and our rebellion, the many things that we do, God still loves us. He is not moved by anything. But Jesus explained some kind of things that he told the um, disciples and other people that their righteousness was supposed to exceed the righteousness of the, uh, of the Pharisees. Other than that, they will not enter into the kingdom of God. And what type of Pharisee love that he was talking about? He says that, for example, give and I also give to you. Visit me, I also visit you. Do this thing for me, I also expect something in return. That is the man type of idea. That is what the Pharisees were doing. So many people do not understand the type of love that um, we need to have as believers. So when somebody maybe visit you in church or visit in your home and then you don't visit the person back the person is offended he said i did this thing for you and you even didn't appreciate it you didn't you didn't come to me or do this thing that is the human kind of love and that is what jesus said that when you operate in that kind of love you don't qualify for the kingdom hallelujah but god looks at us in a different angle despite our not even giving back to him he still loves us he loves us, not expecting anything from us. The love is still the same. That is how agape love goes. Because many people expect that, oh, I love you, I have to, uh, I'm giving you this, so you have to also give this in return to me to prove that you love me. Hallelujah. That is what many people have um, in their minds, and then they do. So it is not that type of love we are talking about. We are talking about the selfless love. Selfless love looks beyond the 
physical he doesn't look at himself but always look at the other to be able to make sure that he put that person first and making sure that the person uh, also uh, is um, what you call it receive the best that he has expecting nothing in return so if he is giving services or whatever he does not care whether he will receive a service back he can still do it because he is showing that kind of love that is the love agape which does not expect anything in return hallelujah but so love but when there's a return no problem that is also okay amen so we have to understand what it's all about and this is the love the god kind of love that we have been born again into it is inside us because we are born of god and that is that seed is in us which we all always have to make sure that that love grows because god is that we say that god is love and we have been born in love so we have to stay in an atmosphere of love which will help our emotional um stability and everything for us to live a healthy life so you see that where love is not or you see that love is absent it, it repels other people to come into that particular environment hallelujah so there are some few things that i want to share from here when we look at um um matthew chapter 22 36 to 40 i want to read it quickly a question came to jesus and then jesus um brought an answer amen he says um master what is the great commandment in the law he said what is the great commandment in the law say jesus said unto him thou shalt love thy love thy god with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind this is the first and great commandment and the second is like unto it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophet hallelujah so we see that in the old testament in exodus chapter 20 god gave them a commandment it was a commandment on what based on love but the way it was broken down and expressed people thought that it was a, a, a strong law which was trying to restrict them not to do some certain things but it was all about love which jesus came to explain and then summarize it so in that summary when the man was asking jesus that what is the greatest commandment he says that loving god with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind with your everything and he said the second greatest is to love your neighbor as yourself so we see that lifestyle or what god intended for us to operate in was in love and love is all about what relationship that is what we have to understand that is what god intended for man to live in relationship so when you see today that they are trying to distance us in a kind of thing it is directly contrary to the word of god because god wants us to be together god wants us to fellowship with one another so when they say that distance yourself from two meters from others it is satanic it is something that is not of god because god wants fellowship that is why he created us so you see that all the time god has a mind to bring us to a, a place that we will, we will be happy and we have been created with but satan always works against the things of god hallelujah so relationship comes with fellowship and being together not trying to separate or distance ourselves apart so when we begin to see all these things though they are giving instruction concerning um, issues that are happening it shouldn't be permanent and when this issue is solved life has to become to normal because if you want to solve a, 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 a problem or a solution or something it is just temporary but when it tries to become a permanent, then you know that Satan is at work to destroy relationship that God has set in emotion. The first relationship is with God. So if anyone love God, if you look at the Ten Commandments, God says that we should not take his name in vain or save any other God. That means that we will love him and then put him first and nothing else. 
and it's a love that we have from him that is where it strengthens and bring our relationship with him um, it, it strengthen our relationship with him in that atmosphere of love so whoever loves God will put God first and will also obey him that is what he was all talking about and also Jesus spoke about the second commandment which was to love your neighbor as yourself so when you love your neighbor as yourself you will not harm your neighbor you will not cheat your neighbor you will never do anything wrong to your neighbor but what you expect others to do for you you will also do for them and that is what love is about it brings us together it brings some kind of harmony in our society to love ourselves to serve one another to respect one another that is what love is so man was created to dwell in the atmosphere of love because love is so powerful that when it's expressed it creates some kind of climate around that particular area and when that climate is there everybody wants to come under that atmosphere because that is what we have been created in and it is inside our dna so wherever there's love people want to come to the place when children are being raised up where love is they want to go there anywhere anything that is contrary to that you will see that they will be running away from that particular environment hallelujah so where the at there's an atmosphere of love um the atmosphere became becomes very very sweet and a, 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 what do you call it? an environment that everybody wants to be and there are a lot of things that you can expect in that under that uh, atmosphere that is appreciation hallelujah you will experience appreciation. There will not be any selfishness there, but there will be respect for one another. And also, it does not hold grudges. It forgives. It forbears. It is patient, as um, uh, Paul said. It, it also doesn't take advantage of other people. Because there are some other people that when somebody is doing good for them or something, they take advantage about that. that even their own personal duties and other things that they are supposed to do, they will not do because somebody is helping them and they will leave everything to them. But love does not go that way. Hallelujah. Love is almost expressed. So when there's some kind of assistance or something coming, you also cooperate and then everything will flow smoothly. That is an atmosphere that the Lord was talking about. So when you look at um, what Jesus said concerning love, Love can be expressed in different ways. I will talk about that. He says that the commandment of Jesus that he gave, he said from John chapter 13, 34, he says, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. So God or the Lord Jesus Christ gave a new commandment. That commandment was what? Love one another. He said we should love ourselves. That was, we could see it from the second commandment. See, the way he has loved us or loved the disciples, he told them that they should love one another. And even he said that that is what will be a proof or a, 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 a kind of um, track record for people to see that these people are the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It is love, love that... Um, have to be demonstrated so man's atmosphere of existence is love it will always help our emotional system because love is expressed through our emotions hallelujah hallelujah so there are some requirements for expressing our love in an atmosphere most of the people uh, normally quote from John 3 16 and say that for you to express your love, you see, God expresses love by giving Jesus Christ. So it comes through giving, but love goes beyond giving. God gave us a, 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 a kind of expression there for us to see that he loves us, so he gave his all. But love is not only giving about all, because we have people that can give and they will still not love. Hallelujah. They can give you everything that you are looking for, but they will still not love you. Only giving to failing some certain things. So that is what happens. They only give, not that they love you, but maybe they want to satisfy something or maybe please you in some very way. So that is not only. Because if you look at the basis of love with the word of God, as God was speaking from the commandment, 
it is obedience and submission that is the foundation of love expression of love that's why jesus said that if you love me keep my commandment hallelujah so the expression of love first is to uh, obey and to submit that is where you, if one can express his love and then later it comes in of giving and other things but god is almighty so one of the areas that he can express his love to us is to give but our way of expressing our love to him is not only to give first is to obey him and to submit to him so anyone who loves god will not speak evil about god will not uh, uh, mention his name in vain he will not bow to any other idol or god but he will serve him alone hallelujah he will uh, do what um, live in total submission to God, listening to what God is telling him to do, and then he will do it for the glory of the Lord. So that is the one of the uh, a, a way to express our love, our love for the Lord and our love for one another. It talks about obedience and submission. So when there is not obedience and the person says, well, I'm giving you this, I'm giving you that to show that I love you, it is a lie. The basis is submission and <coughs> obedience. And when we do that, we will see the glory of God. So Jesus said in John 15, if you love me, keep my commandment. So a person keeping God's commandment is expressing his love to God. Because whatever you love, you submit to. When a, a, a woman, love, a wife loves his husband, he submits to according as the word of God has said. Hallelujah. So we have to understand and from John 15, 10, he said that if ye keep my commandment, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandment and I abide in his love. So Jesus kept his father's commandment. So he was able to abide. He was able to stay in that love, that environment and love. So he said that for us to also stay in that same love, we have to keep the commandment. So keeping God's commandment is an expression of uh, our love to him hallelujah so when love is at work we see many many things when we look at first corinthians 13 18 is it the king james use charity um, eight so not 18 eight he said charity never faileth but whether there be prophecies they shall fail whether there be tongues they shall cease whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. I want us to begin to get something out from this particular scripture. That's why I, I put my, the theme of my this in the sustaining power of love. The sustaining power of love. So here we can see where it says that prophecies and many, many, many things will cease or pass away. But love will never fail. That love will still endure forever. Hallelujah. So when love becomes the foundation of anything, it can hold it forever. And that foundation cannot be shaken. That foundation cannot be destroyed. It will hold. And love also acts as a bond or as a glue that can bring things together. So people who love God carry the presence of God wherever they go. God will stay with them. And anywhere they go, the presence of God goes with them. The same thing with individuals who love themselves. You see that without the other, they don't feel so much because they are glued to um, emotionally. They become one. That's where God, um, what we call it, the Lord is expecting us to love ourselves and love him the more and more so that he will be first in our lives. And what we also expect others to do for us, we do for them the same, expressing our love. So when you come, we look at where it says that it faileth not. So when the love is the foundation, and when love is the gluing power that holds the things together, that thing will never fail. That thing will never, never be destroyed. So when we come to the church or the body of Christ, we can see the expression of love where you can see unity. People will love themselves. People will want to come. It brings growth even to the ministry or to that particular church where love is. The Bible makes us understand that when the church started growing in the, after the day of Pentecost, many were added to the church because 
love was expressed. People who had properties they do, did not uh, take it as their own. They brought it and then they shared it to all so that everybody never had a need. So many people were coming under that environment, that atmosphere, because love was expressed. So the same thing that where in a church that there is no partiality, there is no anything like that, people are respected, people are loved, people are treated well. You can see that everybody wants to come under that atmosphere. There are times that you can even not go for an evangelism, but people will hear that, oh, this particular place, when you go, you can say, it is like an atmosphere. So when somebody comes into that kind of atmosphere, he feels so much good and then wants to be part of that particular congregation. So love in that environment will bring or it will bind, put the people together and then um, bring a kind of growth in the church. And also in the home, when love is expressed in the home, it unites the family. It creates acceptance and security. And so you see couples rushing home immediately after work. Sometimes even when they say there's overtime, they, some of them might not want to go to do the overtime because the atmosphere in the home is full of love. They want to rush home. But where love is not expressed and there is tension, for them to avoid some certain things, most of them will have, have, um, prefer to do more overtime to get some money, as if that they want to, they want to help the house or do some certain thing, but just to avoid it. And some people can even do the overtime. When they finish, they will also pass by their friend's home to stay there. So when they come, they only come and sleep, and then they go away. Because the atmosphere is not um, um, conducive for the, the, their emotional um, stability. So in such an atmosphere, it causes a lot of trouble. That is where we have to find every way to create an atmosphere of, of love in the place. So when the person goes to work, when he goes out, he wants to rush back home after the work. So there are some people that when in some working places, you see that when the work is over, you see people driving very, very fast, speeding up to go home. Why? Because they have created a love atmosphere in the home that they always want to see themselves together. Hallelujah. So that is what every home needs to, to create an environment of love. And that love will sustain the home, will keep the home going. And the children will also feel very healthy. Where there's tensions and other things in the home, even the children, they are not very happy about the situation. And babies can even get sick in such an environment, especially where there are fighting. You can see that the temperature of babies will be very hot. They can sense what is happening, but they can't say or express themselves concerning what is going on. So, but when there's love, you will see the baby jumping in, very happy, healthy, and other things. So, it is very, very important. And the same thing happens to the working place. In the working place where love is expressed, there is also respect. Relationship, it brings the people together, and it can also bring growth and increase in that company. People will want to go and work there. Because the environment is said that um, people are accepted and people are respected and everybody wants to go to that particular place because an environment of love has been created. People will not complain and people will work very, very hard. You see, when there are no leaders or whoever are there to watch them, an individual will work very hard because of the love atmosphere. But when people are treated very, very bad, and the love is not there. When maybe there's no leader or any authority, people relax, they don't want to do the work. But when they see somebody coming, I see that they are working very hard. That when you see this thing, you can see that something is missing, and that is love. So in such environment, sometimes it happens that when there's a need, where maybe the authority will say, oh, I have some of these projects, so I want you people to do over time. People will willingly want to do something to help the company to grow because of the love um, that is an atmosphere that is in the place. And many people will want to come and work in that organization or company. And it also elevates the name of that company because you sense a, 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 that kind of sense of acceptance and then respected and many, many things happen. In so love is very, very important and it will keep that company moving. If somebody wants to say anything bad against the company or do anything, 
people will defend it because of the love environment that is there. The same thing happens to ministries and other people when love is expressed. People outside can even stand and then defend you on some certain things. So for us to be able to build a very good relationship and to sustain our homes, companies, friendship, ministries, which is lasting, the foundation and the power is love. You see, love never fails. So when you uh, um, create an atmosphere of love for your business, your business will never fail. If it is a marriage relationship, the marriage will never fail. If it is a ministry, the ministry will never fail. Because the Bible says love never fails. So when it is like trying to put salt to preserve um, something in the olden days, salt was used as a preservation. So that pre preserving power is there. That thing cannot rot. It will remain fresh as long as the salt is inside. So when love is there, it will keep it. It says love never fails. King James says charity. So because it never fails, you yourself that is operating in that app, you will never fail. You will never fail in business. You will never fail in ministry. You will never fail in anything because love is your foundation. Love has bound you together and love is moving you. So it is very, very important for us all to operate in love. So if we don't want to fail in business, if you don't want to fail in life, if you don't want to fail in ministry, if you don't want to fail in anything that you want to do, let the power of love sustain that thing and you see it lasting. Love is very, very important. And love talks about obedience and submission and also expression sometimes come through giving. Sometimes it can um, be giving of service, giving of yourself, giving of many, many things, not only uh, material things. Material things are okay, but giving of oneself is also an expression of love. Somebody who might want to do everything that you want to do, that person will do for you. It's a, a kind of giving offering of your service or something it's not only maybe buying you maybe dresses or something that means that the person is in love because we have our minds have been programmed to some particular areas that when we give you something we prove that we love you know that is not the only thing we can give our time we can give many many things because time is part of your life but man's lifetime is embedded in a time frame so if somebody give one hour of his time for you he has given part of his destiny. It's also giving. The same thing that when we go to work, the, our time that we give over there, we are paid for the time. Hallelujah. So it is part of your uh, uh, time existence that is being given. So we thank God for the sustaining power of love. When we learn to express this kind of God um, kind of love, that is agape, we will never fail. Everything about us will be sustained and will be empowered, strengthened forever. In this time that we are in, as we are expecting the move of God, as we are expecting the power of God to flow in every area of our lives, we have to make sure that love is our foundation. Love is what we um, express in anything that we do, and we will see God's power. On the day of Pentecost, they were in one accord. It is love that brought them together, gave them one mind, this, with obedience and submission, God came, moved mightily, and used them. The same thing that when we begin to operate in love, we will see the glory of the Lord. I pray that the outpouring of the Holy Ghost will empower us, and the seed of love that is in us, that God, uh, when we got born again, born, uh, born of the Spirit, will, will continue to grow and then expand so that it, it will begin to express God to people, that people will see that we are really the disciples of God by how we express the love. May the name of the Lord be blessed, and I pray that your love will grow stronger and stronger each day as you live in submission to the Father, to, to the Lord, and also obey Him, and also express by your giving, giving your all, as the Bible said, that we should give our body as a living sacrifice. May the Lord richly bless you, and may His name be magnified. Hallelujah. I want us to pray right now as we ask that the Lord will touch our lives, help us to express our love, touch us and strengthen and empower us so that anything that is contrary to love, 
will be removed from our life. That is hatred, selfishness, and other things. We see all that many, many things that are happening that are destroying lives is opposite to love. When love is there, leaders of nations will think about their people, help them to be able to come to a particular point. So let us pray and ask that God will help us and remove anything that is against love in our lives and then empower us with love so that we'll be able to express his image and his likeness as here on earth to the world. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we'll bless you as we have heard your word about love, the agape love, the sustaining power of love. We pray that your love will sustain our relationship with you, our relationship with our fellow brethren, our relationship with our families, our relationship in our working places. We pray that love will continue to reign supreme in the name of Jesus. Anywhere that we lack, we pray for mercy, we pray for forgiveness, we pray that you remove such characters and attitudes that doesn't promote love in our lives. And we pray that love will prevail. As your word says that if we love you, we should keep your commandment, grant us the grace that we'll be able to keep your commandment to express our love for you. We thank you and we we'll bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So we thank God we will 